We start chapter number four and uh, we discuss the electrical energy. So let us discuss electrical energy. We consider a source over here. The source is in the form of a point charge and the magnitude of uh, the charge of the source is Q1 Coulomb. Uh, there will be uh, electric field intensity in the uh, vicinity of the source. There will be an electric field in the vicinity of the source. And if we place a charge of uh, Q Coulomb uh, in the uh, electric field intensity of the source, this charge of Q Coulomb will move from position A to position B in the direction of the electric field due to the force of repulsion. So there will be a force of repulsion on this charge of Q Coulomb and uh, this uh, charge of Q Coulomb will move uh, in the direction of the uh, in the direction of the electric field intensity. So you want to find out the energy which is provided by the source to move this charge of Q Coulomb from the initial position A to the final position B. Okay. So, uh, in order to uh, calculate the amount of energy which is supplied by the source to move this charge of Q Coulomb from the initial position A to the final position B, we consider a very uh, small uh, portion of the distance which is represented by DL. Okay, so we know that DL uh, is uh, a portion of uh, a small portion of the distance vector which is in the direction of the unit vector AR. We consider this uh, differential length vector in the direction of the electric field intensity or in the direction of the force. So we know that there will be a force of repulsion on the charge of Q Coulomb and uh, this charge of Q Coulomb uh, will move in the direction of the force. So the force is in the direction of the unit vector AR as well. Similarly, the electric field intensity in, uh, the, in, in this region will be in the direction of the unit vector AR. So uh, we consider uh, the unit vector in this, uh, particular, in this particular direction and uh, we assume that uh, this unit vector is represented by AR. So the differential energy, uh, the differential energy which is uh, supplied by the source to move this charge of Q Coulomb along the differential distance DL will be represented by DW. So the differential energy which is supplied by the source of Q1 Coulomb to move this charge of Q Coulomb along the differential distance DL will be DW and uh, DW will be equal to uh, FDL. So uh, the two vectors on the right hand side of uh, in the right hand side of uh, this equation are in the same direction. You see DL is in the direction of the unit vector AR and uh, F is in the direction of the unit vector AR as well. So the simple product on the right hand side of equation number 4.1 uh, can be replaced by the scalar product. Why? Because AR dot AR is 1 and uh, F dot DL will be equal to uh, uh, F dot DL will be equal to FDL. So we know that uh, this force will be equal to QE. We know that this force will be equal to QE. So we put the value of the force. So the differential energy uh, which is required to move this charge of uh, Q Coulomb 
along the differential distance dl will be equal to qe uh, dot dl. And if you want to find out the total energy which is uh, supplied by the source to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position A to the final position B in the direction of the electric field intensity, we integrate equation number 3 and the integration of equation number 3 uh, gives you the total energy which is supplied by the source to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position A to the final position B. So this much uh, uh, energy is uh, supplied by the source to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position A to the final position B. Okay. Now, uh, let's say we want to move, uh, we want to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the electric field. We need an external um, agency of uh, uh, energy. We need an external um, external. We need an external agent. So uh, we move. Uh, this charge of Q coulomb uh, from the initial position B to the final position A against the electric field intensity. So uh, the force uh, which will be required to move the charge of uh, Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the field will be equal to minus F now. Uh, this force must be equal to the electric force uh, which has already been discussed and this force must be in opposite uh, direction of the electric force. So the differential energy which is required to move this uh, charge of uh, Q coulomb along the differential distance dl against the electric field intensity will be dw and dw will be equal to minus f dot dl. We need uh, a force which will be equal to minus f uh, which will be equal to minus f. Why? Because we move uh, this charge of Q coulomb uh, along the differential distance dl uh, but against the electric field intensity. So we put the value of f in equation number 4.5 and f is equal to qe. So the differential energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb along the differential distance dl against the field will be equal to minus Q e dot dl. And uh, if you want to find out the total energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against uh, the electric field intensity, we need to integrate uh, this particular integration, uh, this particular equation. So the integration of uh, this equation uh, will give you the energy which is required to move a charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the electric field. So this much energy will be required. Uh, this much energy will be required to move a charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against uh, the electric field intensity. Line integral. Let us talk about line integral. We consider uh, uh, two points uh, B and A and these two points are located uh, in a uniform electric field uh, which is represented by E. We move uh, a charge of Q coulomb from uh, the initial position B to the final position A uh, along the given path. Uh, you guys uh, can see uh, the path. Um, you see um, it might be 
a zigzag path by the way so the amount of energy uh, we need to find out the amount of energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A um, um, in, in the, the uniform electric field along the given path. So in order to calculate the uh, total energy which is required to move uh, this uh, charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A, we divide this uh, path uh, into uh, a very large number of very, very small segment. That is delta L1, delta L2, delta L3, delta L4, delta L5, delta L6, and delta L7. So we have uh, divided this path into a very large number of very, very small segments and you guys can see seven segments of uh, seven small segments of uh, the given path in this uh, particular uh, case so uh, we will calculate the amount of energy which will be required to move uh, the charge of q coulomb uh, along the first segment uh, then we will calculate the amount of energy which uh, will be required to move this charge of coulomb uh, this charge of Q coulomb along the second segment, uh, then along the third segment, then along the fourth segment, then along the fifth segment, then along the sixth segment, and then along the seventh segment. And we will take uh, the sum of uh, these energies, and uh, the sum of all these energies will be uh, equal to the total energy, the total energy which will be required to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the, uh, uh, from uh, the initial position B to the final position A in a uniform electric field. So the amount of uh, energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb uh, along the first segment of the given path uh, will be equal to minus Q E dot delta L1. Similarly, the amount of energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb uh, along the second segment of the path will be equal to minus Q E dot E dot delta L2. The amount of energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb along the third segment of the given path uh, will be equal to minus Q E dot delta L3 and so on the uh, amount of uh, energy which is required to uh, move this charge of uh, Q coulomb along the final segment of the given path uh, will be equal to minus Q E uh, dot delta L7. So the total energy will be equal to the sum of all these energies. So the total energy will be equal to delta W1 plus delta W2 plus delta W3 plus delta W4 plus delta W5 plus delta W6 plus delta W7. We put uh, the values uh, on the right hand side of equation number 12. So the total energy will be equal to minus QE dot delta L1 minus QE dot delta L2 minus QE dot delta L3 and so on minus QE dot delta L7. And equation number 13 uh, can be written as uh, we have minus QE dot uh, into delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3 plus delta L4 plus delta L5 plus delta L6 plus delta L7. Uh, let us uh, focus uh, uh, on uh, the on, on uh, uh, the quantities uh, which is in the bracket. So you see, uh, 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 in the bracket, we have uh, basically uh, the sum of seven vectors. So we add these vectors uh, according to head to tail rule and the addition of these seven vectors uh, according to head to tail rule uh, gives you uh, a resultant vector. You see, we add 
all these uh, seven vectors uh, according to head to tail rule and uh, the addition of all these seven vectors uh, according to head to tail rule gives you the resultant vector LBA. So the vector sum of delta L1, delta L2, delta L3, delta L4, delta L5, delta L6 and delta L7 results in LBA. So if we put uh, this uh, value in the previous equation, the total energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A in the uniform electric field will be equal to minus Q E dot LBA. Uh, so we can uh, calculate, you see, uh, this energy uh, either with the help of this particular equation or uh, with the help of uh, equation number uh, 14. So if you focus uh, in equation, uh, if, you, if you focus on equation number 14, uh, in equation number 14, uh, this path is involved, right? So if you focus on equation number 14, uh, this path is uh, involved uh, in uh, equation number 14. This path is involved in equation number 14. And uh, if you uh, focus on uh, this particular equation, uh, then you see uh, the, straight, uh, the straight line is involved uh, in this particular equation. So uh, this, uh, this, this means that uh, if you want to find out uh, the total energy which is required to move a charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A, we can select any path. This is, you see, the conclusion. We can select any path between these two points. We can select a zigzag path, we can select a, a straight line, or we can select a circular path. So we can select any path for uh, the uh, calculation of the total energy which is required to move a charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A. Well, uh, now what we do, uh, we use uh, this particular equation to uh, find out the total energy in this particular case. And uh, uh, in order to apply this particular equation, we consider a very small uh, portion uh, of uh, this uh, straight uh, line uh, which is represented by DL. So we consider a very small portion of this uh, resultant vector which is represented by DL. So we can calculate the energy which is required to move this charge of uh, Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A will be equal to minus Q uh, into the integration of E dot DL from B to A. And as uh, the electric field intensity uh, is uniform uh, along this path, so we can uh, take the electric field intensity uh, out of the sign of this integration. So the total energy will be equal to minus Q uh, E dot the integration of DL. And what is the integration of DL? The integration of DL is uh, basically the sum of uh, uh, all the small uh, uh, segments along this straight line. And the sum of all the small segments along this line will give you LBA. So uh, the integration of uh, DL from B to A gives you LBA, it gives you the resultant vector. So the total energy which is required to move this charge of uh, uh, Q coulomb uh, from the initial position B to the final position A uh, will be equal to uh, minus Q E dot uh, LBA and we get the same equation uh, which uh, we have already derived. So it means that uh, uh, if you want to calculate the total energy which is required to move this charge of Q coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A, 
uh, we can consider the uh, line uh, integration as well. So there are two con conclusions in this particular case. You guys can choose any path uh, between uh, the initial position B and the final position A for the sake of your convenience. And you guys can, uh, um, you guys can apply the line integration for the calculation of the total energy as well. Voltage or potential difference. You see, um, in order to explain the voltage or potential difference, what we do, we, ca we consider a source which is in the form of a point charge and the magnitude of the charge of the source is Q1 Coulomb. There will be an electric field in the vicinity of this particular source and uh, uh, the, the amount of energy which is required to move a charge of Q Coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the field will be equal to uh, minus Q into the integration of E dot DL from B to A. So this much energy is required to move a charge of Q Coulomb from uh, the initial position B to the final position A. This much energy is required to move a charge of Q Coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A. Well, uh, what is uh, the uh, potential difference uh, between these two points? We want to find out the voltage or uh, the potential uh, difference between uh, the two points. So, uh, you see, the amount of energy which is required to move a unit positive charge uh, from the initial position B to the final position A against the field is known as voltage or the potential difference between these two points. So uh, this much energy uh, is required to move a charge of Q Coulomb uh, from the initial position B to the final position A against the field. If we want to move the energy, which is, uh, if, we, if we want to find out the energy which is required to move a charge of one coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the field, we need to divide the total energy by Q. And if we divide the total energy by Q, it will give you the energy which will be required to move a charge of one coulomb from the initial position B to the final position A against the field and uh, this energy will be equal to the voltage between point A and B or the potential difference uh, between point A and B. So the voltage uh, between point A and B will be equal to the total energy divided by the uh, total charge which gives you this particular integration. So we can calculate the energy with the help of the integration which is given in equation number 20. So the amount of energy uh, which is required to move a unit positive charge from the initial position B to the final position A against the field is known as electric field, uh, is known as voltage between these two points or potential difference between these two points. The voltage due to a point charge. The voltage between uh, the voltage due to a point charge. Okay, we are going to calculate the voltage between two points due to a point charge. So we consider a point charge over here, uh, which is basically a source. So we consider a source of Q Coulomb, and uh, we consider a point at a radial distance R over here. So the electric field intensity at uh, the radial distance R
So the electric field intensity at a radial distance r, which is caused by a charge of Q coulomb, will be equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square a r. So this will be the electric field intensity at a radial distance r, and this electric field intensity is caused by a point charge. Now we consider a very small uh, we consider a very small portion of the distance between point A and B. So uh, the differential length vector uh, in the direction of the electric field intensity uh, will be equal to the differential length vector in the direction uh, of the electric field intensity will be equal to dr, ar. We consider this uh, differential length vector in the direction of the electric field intensity. And if you want to find out the voltage uh, between point A and B, we can find out the voltage between point A and point B uh, with the help of, uh, with the help of uh, this uh, integration. So let us calculate E dot DL. We calculate E. So you see E is in the direction of the unit vector AR dot DL and DL is in the direction of the unit vector AR as well. So E dot DL will be equal to Q into DR by 4 pi epsilon r square and in order to calculate the voltage between uh, these two points uh, we uh, we uh, integrate you see this particular equation so the voltage uh, between uh, these two points uh, will be equal to minus the integration of q dr by 4 pi epsilon r square so you see what is how do we define the voltage between point a and uh, point b we say that the amount of energy uh, which is required to move a unit positive charge from uh, uh, the uh, initial position b to the final position a so you see if we move a unit positive charge from the initial position B to the final position A, R will be changing from RB to RA. So this is how you see uh, the distance uh, with respect to the source changing. If we move a unit positive charge from the initial position B to the final position A against the field, R is changing from RB to RA. So we integrate uh, the right hand side of equation number 24 uh, from RB to RA. And the equation number 24 can be written as we have minus Q four pi by 4 pi epsilon and then we have the integration of dr by r square. And we know that the integration of dr by r square is minus 1 over r. So the integration of uh, dr by r square is minus 1 over r and uh, the voltage between these two points will be equal to q by 4 pi epsilon into 1 over r if we put the limits on the right hand side of this uh, particular equation so the voltage uh, between uh, these two points will be equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon into 1 over r a minus 1 over r b so this is how we calculate the voltage between these two points uh, we know that the voltage between these two points will be equal to the absolute potential at point A minus the absolute potential at point B. Uh, if we compare, uh, if we compare uh, these two equations, then uh, the absolute potential at point A will be equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon R A and the absolute potential at point B will be equal to Q. Um, divided by 4 pi epsilon rb in general 
the absolute potential at a radial distance from uh, the source uh, will be equal to q by 4 pi epsilon r. So this is how we calculate the absolute uh, potential at a radial distance uh, r from the source and the source is in the form of a point charge and the magnitude of uh, uh, the source is uh, the magnitude of the charge of the source is q coulomb. Uh, let us consider another scenario. You see uh, r uh, is the radial distance uh, between the source and uh, the point under observation in this particular case. So let us consider another scenario. Uh, we assume that the position vector of the source is uh, uh, the position vector of the source uh, is uh, r1 and the position vector of uh, uh, this uh, point is the position vector of this point is r so the distance between the source and uh, this point is r minus r1 uh, if we want to uh, calculate the absolute potential at point p which is caused by the source so we consider uh, this particular equation now uh, we consider this particular equation uh, you see uh, the absolute potential uh, at point p will be equal to q by 4 pi epsilon uh, into r minus r1 so r minus r1 uh, is uh, the distance between the source and the point under observation now potential due to a line charge potential due to a line charge so we consider a line charge over here uh, the magnitude of the charge on this line is q cool coulomb and uh, the length of this line is l meter we consider a very small portion of the line the length of the small portion is uh, uh, dl and the magnitude of the charge on the small portion is dq the position vector of uh, the small portion of the source is r1 and the position vector of uh, the uh, point under observation is represented by r and you see r minus r1 is uh, the distance vector which is extending from the small uh, portion of the source to the point under observation so in order to calculate the absolute potential uh, at uh, point p uh, we calculate the differential potential uh, at point p first and uh, the differential potential at point p will be uh, due to the small portion of the source and the magnitude of uh, the charge on the small portion of the source is dq so the differential potential um, the differential potential uh, at uh, the given point which is caused by the small portion of the source is equal to dq by 4 pi epsilon r minus r1 and we know that dq uh, in this particular case will be equal to rho l dl so we put the value of dq uh, in this particular equation uh, in the first equation of this uh, slide uh, so dq will be equal to rho l dl so the differential uh, potential at the given point will be equal to rho l dl by 4 pi epsilon into r minus r1 and you know that this r minus r1 basically represents the distance between the small portion of the source and the point under observation in order to calculate uh, the uh, absolute potential at point p which is caused by the line charge we integrate this particular equation and the integration of uh, this particular particular equation results uh, in the absolute potential at point p so the absolute potential at point p will be equal to the integration of rho l dl by 4 pi epsilon r minus r1 uh, we consider uh, the potential due to a surface charge so let us consider uh, this diagram over here you see uh, the magnitude of the charge on this particular surface is q coulomb and the area of this surface is s square 
um, the area of the surface is s meter uh, s square meter so uh, we consider a very small portion of the source the area of the small portion is ds and the magnitude of the charge on the small portion is dq the position vector of the small portion of the source is r1 the position vector of the point under observation is r and r minus r1 represents the vector extending from the small portion of the source at uh, uh, the small portion of the source to the point under observation let us calculate the differential potential at point p and this differential potential is caused by the small portion of the source so the differential potential uh, which is uh, caused by uh, the small portion of the source will be equal to dq by 4 pi epsilon r minus r1 and dq in this particular case will be equal to rho s ds we know that rho s is the surface charge density uh, of the source and ds is the area of the small portion of the source so we put the value of dq on the right hand side of this particular equation so the differential um, potential at the given point will be equal to rho s ds by 4 pi epsilon into r minus r1 um, we integrate uh, this equation and the integration of this equation give you the absolute potential the potential at the given point so the potential at the given point will be equal to the integration of rho s ds by 4 pi epsilon into r minus r1 we consider the potential due to a volume charge so we assume that uh, uh, the charge the magnitude of the charge uh, inside the source is q coulomb and uh, the volume of the source is v cubic meter uh, here is uh, the small portion of the source the position vector of the small portion of the source is r1 and the position vector of the point under observation is r here is the distance vector which is extending from the source to the point under observation so the differential potential which is caused by the small portion of the source uh, will be equal to the differential potential uh, at the point under observation which is caused by the small portion of the source will be equal to uh, dq by 4 pi epsilon into r minus r1 dq in this particular case will be equal to uh, rho v dv so we put the value of dq which is uh, rho v uh, dv so the differential potential at point p will be equal to rho v dv by 4 pi epsilon um, into r minus r1 uh, where r minus r1 is the distance between the small portion of the source and the point under observation we integrate uh, equation number 45 and the integration of 45 results in uh, the potential at the given point so the potential at the given point uh, due to the volume charge will be equal to the integration of rho v dv by 4 pi epsilon r minus r1 this is how we calculate the potential uh, at the given point due to a volume charge potential gradient potential gradient uh, let us consider the source over here the source is in the form of a point charge and we consider a point in the field of the source the radial distance between the source and the point is uh, represented by r so the electric field intensity at uh, the given point will be equal to q by 4 pi epsilon r square into a r so if you want to calculate the electric field intensity at the given point we can calculate the electric field intensity at the given point with the help of equation number 52 and if you want to calculate the potential at the given point the potential at the given point uh, uh, will be equal to q 
by 4 pi epsilon r. Now we uh, calculate the gradient of the potential in the rectangular coordinate system. So the gradient of the potential in the rectangular coordinate system will be equal to curly v by curly x a x plus curly v by curly y a y plus curly v by curly z a z. This is how we calculate the the uh, gradient of the potential in rectangular coordinate system. Uh, if you look at uh, equation number 53, uh, equation number 53 is in terms of r. So it means that the absolute potential is in the spherical coordinate system. So if it is in the spherical coordinate system, uh, we need to consider the gradient of the potential in the spherical coordinate system. And this is how we calculate the gradient of the potential in the spherical coordinate system. We have curly V by curly R, A R plus 1 over R sine theta into curly V by curly phi, A phi plus 1 over R curly V by curly theta, A theta. So this is how we calculate uh, the gradient of the uh, potential in spherical coordinate system. So let us uh, calculate the gradient of this uh, potential in uh, the spherical coordinate system. If we calculate the gradient of this potential in the spherical coordinate system, uh, we obtained uh, we obtained uh, the gradient of the absolute uh, potential, uh, which is uh, delta v, and delta v will be equal to minus q by 4 pi epsilon r square a r. And if we compare uh, this uh, particular equation with the equation of the electric field intensity, where is electric field intensity? Uh, here is electric field intensity. So if we compare this equation with the electric field intensity, you see we develop another relationship over here. And uh, uh, we develop uh, this particular relationship, the electric field intensity will be equal to minus delta v. So if uh, the absolute potential is known, uh, just calculate the gradient of the absolute potential, multiply it by minus 1, and you will get the electric field intensity at the given point. Potential due to electric dipole. So we consider an electric dipole. You see, we consider a positive charge, uh, which is located on the z-axis, and then we consider a negative charge, which is located on the z-axis as well. The distance between uh, these two charged particles is very small, which is represented by d. So uh, if uh, the distance between these two charged particles is very small, this arrangement is known as electric dipole. So we consider an electric dipole in this particular diagram. The center of the uh, electric dipole uh, is located at the origin of the rectangular coordinate system. You see R1 uh, is the distance uh, between uh, the positive charge particle and point P. Uh, R2 is uh, the distance between the negative charge particle of the dipole and point P and R is the distance between the center of the dipole and point P. You see, um, if you look at uh, the triangle over here, uh, this R2 minus R1, uh, which is basically the base of this triangle, will be equal to d cos theta. So what we want to do, uh, we want to calculate uh, the uh, potential at the given point. In order to calculate the potential at the given point, we apply the superposition theorem. So we assume that uh, uh, the, the uh, positive charge exists in the vicinity of uh, in, in the vicinity of the point under observation. We will calculate uh, the potential at the point under observation due to the positive charge independently, and then we will assume that only the negative charge exist in the vicinity of the point under observation, the positive charge does not exist and we shall calculate the potential at the given point due to the negative charge independently. We will take uh, the sum of these two potentials and the sum of these two potentials will give you the total potential at the given point. So let us calculate the potential at the given point due to the positive charge. So 
the potential at the given point due to the positive charge will be equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon R1. And the potential at the given point due to the negative charge particle will be equal to minus Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R2. We take the sum of these two potentials and uh, the sum of these two potential will give you the total potential at the given point. So the total potential will be equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon into 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. This equation can be written in this form as well. We have Q uh, by 4 pi epsilon into R2 minus R1 divided by R1 R2. And we know that R2 minus R1 is basically equal to d cos theta. So we know that R2 minus R1 is equal to d cos theta. So the absolute potential at the given point will be equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon um, into d cos theta divided by R1 plus R2. We assume that uh, the point under observation is located far away from the dipole and uh, the distance between uh, the dipole, which is basically d, is very small. So if uh, uh, the distance between the dipole is very small and the point under observation is located far away from the dipole, then R2 will be approximately uh, equal to R1. R1 will be approximately equal to R. Uh, if we put uh, this value of R1 and R2 um, in uh, equation number 64, uh, then we get uh, uh, another equation. So the absolute potential at uh, the point under observation will be equal to Q d cos theta by 4 pi epsilon r squared. So this is how we calculate the absolute potential at the given point. Let us calculate the electric field intensity at the given point. And we can calculate the electric field intensity at the given point uh, with the help of this uh, particular equation. You see, uh, the absolute potential is in uh, the spherical coordinate system. So we uh, calculate the absolute potential. Uh, we calculate the gradient of the absolute potential in the spherical coordinate system. So if we calculate uh, the gradient of the absolute potential uh, in the spherical coordinate system, we get equation number 67, which gives you the electric field intensity at the given point. So the electric field intensity at the given point will be equal to QD by 4 pi epsilon R cube into 2 cos theta AR plus sine theta A theta. Now uh, let us uh, define another vector quantity that is represented by P. So we define P over here which is known as uh, the dipole moment and the product of uh, Q and D uh, is known as dipole moment. We consider D as a vector quantity and we consider P as a vector quantity as well. So QD is represented by P. Now let us consider uh, the unit vector along uh, Z axis and uh, the unit vector uh, along the radial distance R. So we consider these two unit vectors. One unit vector is along the radial distance R, which is represented by AR, and uh, the other unit vector is represented by along Z axis, which is AZ. We know that AR dot AZ will be equal to cos theta. So AR dot AZ uh, will be equal to cos theta. So let us calculate P dot AR. So P is basically equal to QD, and we have dot AR and D. Uh, you guys need to consider D uh, in the direction of the unit vector AZ. Basically, we have got two charged particles. Uh, one is the positive charged particle. The other one is the negative charged particle. So we consider this distance vector in this particular direction. I am talking about uh, vector D. Vector D uh, should extend from the negative charged particle towards the positive charged particle. So D is along uh, Z axis. So we have QD AZ dot ar and we know that az dot ar is cos theta so p dot ar p dot ar will be equal to qd cos theta so what we do we replace qd cos theta in uh, this particular equation by p dot ar we replace qd cos theta uh, in the, this particular equation by p dot ar if we replace it, uh, we get uh, this particular equation. 
So the absolute potential uh, will be equal to P dot A R divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. We know that the unit vector A R is basically equal to vector R divided by the magnitude of vector R. So uh, if we put the value of AR, uh, you see we can calculate, you see uh, the, uh, we can calculate uh, uh, we can calculate the absolute potential at the given point and the absolute potential at uh, the given point will be equal to P dot AR divided by 4 pi epsilon R cube P is the dipole moment and uh, R is uh, the distance between the center of the dipole and uh, the point under observation. Let us consider another equation over here. So we consider another diagram over here. You see <clears throat> the dipole is located away from the origin. So the position vector of the center of the dipole in this diagram is R1. The position vector of the point under observation is R. <coughs> and the distance uh, between uh, the center of the dipole and the point under observation is R minus R1. If this is the case, then uh, the absolute potential at uh, the point under observation will be equal to uh, P dot R minus R1 divided by 4 pi epsilon R minus R1 raised to power 3. Now R minus R1 is, uh, the, uh, is the distance between the center of the dipole and the point under observation. Thank you so much.